May I please get everyone's attention? This is actually a good thing when you hear so much activity in the room. That's actually a good thing. You should listen for those type of sounds often time. I know I do. I like activity. I like to hear buzzing. I, hear, I like to hear and see people talking to each other, networking with one another. That's, that's a good thing. That's what the aim of this meetings that we host here at Community Board 5 is all about. So if I can please get everyone's attention, I would like to want to begin our meeting tonight. I want to open up the meeting. I want to welcome all of you, ladies and gentlemen, young and up, to our first of the year 2018 Community Board meeting here at Community Board 5. My name is Andre T. Mitchell. I am the chairman of Community Board 5, and on behalf of the membership, the board membership, those members that are present, sitting in the first two rows, those board members that are en route, and the district office team headed by our DM, Ms. Melinda Perkins, I would like to welcome you all to tonight's meeting. I hope that all of you are feeling well. How are you doing? Good. Feeling good? Yeah. That's good, and we should, am I right? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you be mine? <laughs> would you be our neighbor? So hopefully here at this beautiful school, here in this beautiful neighborhood in our district, you are beginning to see the sense of what community is all about and what Community Board 5 AIM is all about. We, if you haven't been to a Community Board meeting, we hope that you are taking in what we are doing at this board and the differences that may be taking place. How many of you enjoyed the jazz? Did you hear the light jazz? Show of hands. All right. Any of you enjoyed some of that light refreshments? Do you see the light refreshments we provided? How many of you enjoyed some of that? See, we're very mindful of you all. We know that most of the time the meetings are about 6 o'clock to about 8, 8.30. It's early evening. We know that you may not have gotten something to eat, so we want to make sure that we put something in your stomachs. And hopefully you've met some of the board members because our board members are here and we talk about always making our way around the room. And we want to meet and greet you. Because at Community Board 5, we've been on tour for the last year, maybe close to two. And we've been going to every, pretty much every, every corner of the district. And our goal is to make a connection with every part of the community that exists in, within the confines of Board 5. And so we are really privileged to be on this side of Cypress Hills, which is a part of Community Board 5. We are really excited to be in this beautiful school here at PSIS 7, 171. I know 7 was in there, right? But we are really happy to be here in this beautiful neighborhood at this time. And we are here not just for now, but we are here to stay with you we are your community board, we do work on your behalf, and we want to introduce you um, to the other board members, but before we go into that, I would like for an official welcoming from the principals of this building, and that is Principal um, Mata and huh? Safala. Principals Mata and Safala, can we welcome them please to the podium? Good evening and welcome everyone to IS-171. And welcome also share co-located IS-760. We are so happy that you came out tonight. The doors always open. You are welcome to our community. Uh, just to give you a brief little highlight. Uh, we are now on Twitter. Please follow 171 at Principal Moda so you can see our up-to-date events that we share in our community. And you can find out what we're up to on highlandparkschool.org. 
So just like the park, not too far from here, it's one word, highlandparkschool.org. And a very big shout out to our amazing Councilman Espinal, who is here, who has supported our community and our students from day one. He is our blessing. Thank you so much. And I also wanted to shout out our partner. So both schools partner with this organization, which is the Cypress Hills Local Development Corporation, the gray shirts and the back. So they provide after school programs, but also our students, both schools were on a trip today with Cypress. So we definitely appreciate all the support that we get from them and the Middle School Student Success Center as well. All right, so I want to update um, on a couple of things. We're asked to share what's up and coming. So again, on Twitter and website, we'll have information. But May, sorry, March 10th, in celebration of Women's History Month, we're having our second annual Girls Summit. And so that starts at 9 a.m. So if you are, we are looking for young women and mature women to be part of our panel and activities. It is an amazing experience. We have um, 125 girls in our school alone, and we also have some of our partnering girls. So you know all of the issues that our young girls and young women are struggling with. So we really support them and have those kind of conversations. So it's fun, it's activities, we start with dance, but also to really have those, those conversations and support that they need. So again, for women, that is March 10th to support our girls, or if you have young women in your life that you would like to attend the event, um, you can send them for that as well. And then in May, we have the Boys Summit. So that's also happening. And so both uh, mentoring groups that we have are leading. So these are students are designing the structure, which is less work for me. So I definitely appreciate that. And again, that's March and that is in May. Anything else, Vasquez, that I'm forgetting or leaving out? I'm gonna put them on the spot. All right, thank you. I will invite you all every Tuesday, 2.20 to 3.15, we have parent community engagement. Please become involved in our young students' lives. Thank you so very much. Have a great meeting. Thank you to our principals. As mentioned, we are joined by the esteemed council member for this area. And I want to give him the opportunity to also welcome you all, Councilman Rafael Espinal. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. I really want to thank the board for having me here today. I really appreciate it. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. I just started my second term in the city council, and that would not have been possible without you all. So thank you so much for the support. Um, it truly is an honor and a pleasure, and this comes from the heart as a, from a young boy who was actually born and raised in the neighborhood and continues to live here. Uh, when I grew up, I saw all of the socioeconomic issues my community was dealing with. When I got older, my goal was to make sure that no one has to, no child in this neighborhood has to live in the same conditions I lived in growing here. So it truly is a pleasure to be able to have the opportunity to represent you and fight and make sure that the budget uh, has funding for our communities, making sure our schools are funded, our infrastructure is funded, making sure that the jobs are, are being created in our communities so people can have access to those jobs. And those are the things I'll continue working on, on for the next four years because the work is never over and done, right? But I also like to work on legislation as well. And we have to make sure that we create laws that are helping our communities. And one, one law that I'm actually working on now is pushing the city to create a strong urban agriculture plan to make sure that our community gardens are protected and they also have the resources they need to continue being our neighborhoods. Because those community gardens actually are a resource in building community, also providing fresh food and vegetables to food insecure communities like East New York and Brownsville. So that's one big thing I'm going to work on uh, for the next six months. And uh, I think it's going to bring a lot of uh, great um, uh, benefits to our community as a whole. Um, I also want to say that I am moving my office from Bushwick. Uh, and I'm moving to Broadway Junction. All right, that's great. That's, that's a great response. That's a great response. Some people will complain and say, why are you not in uh, you know, Atlantic Avenue or something? But Broadway Junction is as we know, one of the most heavily trafficked areas 
in, in our neighborhoods, and I think that there's nothing currently there that attracts you to leave the station, but now you'll have my office there. I know everyone will now have access uh, to come visit us, have access to the services that we provide. So just let your neighbors know that we, I am going to be in a very central, centrally, locally, lo centrally located place that benefits the entire district. Um, just trying to see if there's anything else I left out. Um, I think that's it. And, uh, you know, I'm available. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. You can uh, access me directly through, through those channels. Uh, my handle on Twitter and Instagram is R L Espinal. And Facebook is just my full name. Uh, so, again, I'm available and I'm here at your service. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Thank you, Councilman. And uh, because of the council member, we uh, here at CB5 are uh, stepping our community board meetings up to the next level, and I'll give them a chance to talk about that. There you go. I'm so sorry, but um, something really exciting is happening here today. As you see, we have cameras in the room. Uh, we are live currently, right now. I see some of us have our Sunday best on today because we knew that. Um, but this means that the community as a whole has access to what's going on in this room and able to hear all of the great updates the community board has and all the great work the community board is working on. So let, again, let your friends know. There's, a, there's an easy link. It's on YouTube. Every time the meeting starts, they just have to press play and they're actually watching live and what's going on here. And I want to make sure that everyone in the community is connected so they can know what the work the community board is doing. This came out of an initiative. Uh, that we worked on in the city council, the Dig digital inclusionary initiative, and that funding helps bring these programs into the neighborhood. So uh, every, every month, wear your Sunday best, be here, <laughs> make sure everyone knows that what's going on here, and um, yeah, this is great. Thank you, WNET, for all the work you're doing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, council member. Thank you, WNET. So like he mentioned, if you want folks at home, family members, elders to tune in, they can do so right now. All they have to do is go onto YouTube and type in Brooklyn Community Board 5, and all they have to do is press the live button. Brooklyn Community Board 5 on YouTube right now, and they can tune in and watch us live. Thank you uh, as a result of WNY and WNET for providing us that resource. We really appreciate you. And so, as you can see here at CB5, things, and we've been saying CB5 has been alive, right, for some while. And so we are proud to be able to have uh, this service as an additional arm of getting our information out. Um, community, at our board meetings, we changed the format to accommodate you. Other community boards, normally, when you go to their meetings, you, the community, would have to sit quietly and watch the community board business take place before your eyes. And if you signed in to speak, you would have to wait till all the official business was conducted, and then you, community, would have to speak last. At CB5, community is first over everything and everybody. You all have the floor first. While there's agencies that are often time here to make presentations, they have to respectfully sit quietly and listen. While there's others that have need to make presentations at boards, they have to be here and sit quietly and listen to you. Because we believe that you all, we all, the community, are first. The board members are also here. Can the board members present please just hold their, hand, their arm up or hand so that people can see who you are. We, thank you, are trained to listen to you. So we're gonna listen to you. If you signed up and you wanted to speak publicly at this meeting, the board members, we are here to listen to you. And so that's the difference between our meetings and other community board meetings that you go to. Communities are normally last, but here community is first. And with that, we want to give you a chance to speak if you signed up to say something that you wanted us all to listen to you. We have a two-minute rule, three-minute max. 
two minute minimum, three minute maximum rule so that you can speak to it. So you can't come up here and preach a sermon, but you can, if you have an issue that you want us to learn out, know of, we want you to speak straight to that issue so that we can try to get you some help as fast as we could. Are we okay with that community? All right, so I'm going to turn it over to our Sergeant of Arms, uh, one of our executive board members, Ms. Joyce Scott Brayboy, and she's going to call members up. And we're going to ask that everyone come up like to the center and use the microphone because, as we, we said earlier, we are live, and we want everybody who's watching to also hear you as well. Thank you. Leah Salem. Hi, my name is Leah Salem, and I'm the supervisor at the New Lots Library. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the uh, services and programs that we have. So we recently opened an IDNYC office at our library. So if anyone wants to get a free IDNYC ID, please come to our library. It's Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. They're closed every day from 1 to 2 for lunch, and they're also open on Saturday for 10, from 10 to 2. We also got money from our outreach department to do um, programs for older adults. So we're going to be having like an eight to 10 week program, like an art program. So if there are any older adults here who would be interested in that program, like some of the ideas that they have are maybe painting, drawing, po um, poetry, watercolor, please, I'm gonna leave these surveys at the back. Please fill it out, it's very short, just what activity you would be interested in and what day and times work for you and then please see me and bring it back to me. And if anyone wants to know about any other programs we have, our calendar of events is at the back. We have lots of programs for children and adults. We have like Saturday story time, science program for children. We have a learning center on the second floor, so we have a GED program there. So we have lots of programs. We also have Brick, which they do like a film and editing program, so if you're interested in that, that's another option. So thank you for your time. Next is um, Fabrice Armand. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Fabrice Armand, and I'm the Director of Strategic Partnership and Community Engagement for the Department of Correction. Uh, I would like to first thank the Chair and the District Manager for allowing me to speak with you. And part of the reason why I'm here with you tonight is just to tell you some of the opportunities that are currently available at the Department of Correction. Uh, we are currently administering exam number 8319 that is taking place until January 31st. So if you know of any individuals that are currently looking to be part of the criminal justice system, uh, this is a great opportunity for them because starting salaries for correction officers begin at $44,000 and after five and a half years, base salary is 94,500 without including overtime and so forth. So if you guys are interested, I've actually left some of these booklets and packages in the back that has all the information in regards to the test, where to take it and so forth. Uh, I'm currently here with two of the correction officers that are uh, with me. I have Officer Frederick, who is a 12-year veteran of the Department of Correction, and Officer Spence, who's a seven-year veteran, also uh, a veteran of the uh, Armed Forces and the Army as well. Um, the other thing that I would like to point out to you is that most of the time when people think about the Department of Correction, they solely think about the uniform positions. They don't think about the non-uniform position. I currently am not a correction officer, but I work hand in hand with correction officers at the agency. And we currently have about 16 open positions that are currently available from legal coordinators, contract managers, dietitians, agency attorneys, and so forth. So if you know of any individuals that are currently unemployed and are looking for employment, um, uh, the sheet is actually located in the back, so pick up one and make sure you share it with individuals that are looking for jobs. Uh, last thing that I want to point out to you is that we've been doing uh, a series called Confronting Recidivism. And part of this series, the, the, we're spearheading it from the Department of Correction, it is about having a conversation with other city agencies and trying to connect people that were formerly incarcerated to jobs. Uh, we all know that after people serve their time sometimes, it is hard for them to actually get a step up and to actually move on with their lives. So this series is with NYC Department of Probation, Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice, 
New York City Department of Small Business, Department of Labor. It's actually the panel discussion and job fair is happening on January 29th at Brooklyn Borough Hall. We've had it in Queens, we've had it in, in the Bronx. So I'm hoping that people in Brooklyn show up so you're able to actually listen to the panel discussion about what's being done and ask questions. And also the second part is an actual job fair. We currently now have 25 employers that are looking to hire, that are background friendly, and they're looking for, to hire people that, are, that might have done a misdemeanor, might have made a mistake in the past, but are looking to change their lives around. So that flyer's in the back as well. So make sure you come support. And uh, uh, the last thing that I would like to point out is that we're always looking to work in the community. So if there are any programs that are being done, we have a Youth Explorers, we have a, a cadet program, we do uh, stuff all over. So please reach out uh, and, and I'll be here for a little bit more. But my email is Fabrice, F-A-B-R-I-C-E dot Armand, A-R-M-A-N-D, at D-O-C dot N-O-I-C dot G-O-V. But all the information is in the back, so feel free to send us an email. Thank you. Masu Medoli Mudoji. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maxo Medozil. I'm from uh, the New York City Parks and Recreation. I am the new regional manager for uh, District 5, 16, 17, and 18. Uh, and uh, I wanted to come tonight to introduce myself to the community board, to everyone living in the community participating in this meeting. And to let you know that one thing we're trying to do uh, in the Parks Department, of course, is to continue connecting the community with what we're doing with uh, the parks, the properties, and the services that we're offering. We have a new park manager in this uh, district. His name is Ricardo Velasquez, and uh, he started in January, and his office is located at Betsy Head Park Pool. You can contact him there if you need uh, any service from parks. As far as myself, the regional manager, my office will be located at Canarsie Park. Uh, if you need uh, any uh, things from parks, any uh, help, you can call me at 347 865 5403. 347-865-5403. Again, my name is Max Sumedozil, and I'm the new uh, guy in town. By the way, I used to be the park manager here in this district eight years ago, and I'm pleased to be back in uh, Community Board 5. Thank you. Young, young Polancy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. My name is Yuri Polanski, and I'm wondering here, is anybody feels cold this winter? Anybody house is cold this winter? Few people here, right? Anybody wants to cry once you see your heating bill? Well, in that case, your house definitely needs some insulation, and the house needs help. The program of which I would like to present tonight is called Empower New York. And the program is designed for those members of community who cannot afford it otherwise. The program is 100% free, but you have to be income qualified for it. The program is great for elderly people who live on a fixed income, people who recently lost their job, or people who have a lot of kids in their families. The program provides free insulation. We insulate attics, walls, basements at no cost at all. We replace old inefficient refrigerators for brand new energy efficient units, as well as freezers, install LED light bulbs, carbon monoxide, smoke detectors, programmable thermostats. The measures that we install save approximately 30 to 40% on heating bills and about 15 to 20% on electric bills. It's not only good for the winter, but also great for the summer. If your house has a temperature difference, 10 degrees or more, I can tell you without even looking at your home. It has not, doesn't have enough insulation in it. Even if you are not qualified by income, please help us to help those members of community who needs our help. We, we've seen many houses where, especially elderly people, they cannot afford to put the heat on. They're wearing 
fur coats inside the house. They stay in a one small room of the house, heating themselves with an electric heater because they cannot afford it otherwise. Please spread the word. Please let know your neighbors, your relatives, who you think can benefit from our program, who you think we can help. Our phone number is 718-372-3000. It is 718-372-3000. Thank you very much for your time. Brother, Brother Paul Mohammed, please. Assalamualaikum, peace and blessings, and God's peace for the new year. Um, here, you know, I got, the, I got the notice to dress up for tonight, so <laughs> there are people looking at me usually see me in a suit. But I'm here really to uh, chair the public safety to let you know that we're looking to move to have a town hall meeting at 292. Anybody know where's that at on Pickett Avenue in Vermont? Uh, I have two homes in the district, and I grew up in this neighborhood. I, my family's been homeowners over 48 years here. But we're finding that right now uh, we need to spread the information that we have at this meeting that a lot of people are not getting, and especially our youth. We don't see the ages that are really at risk right in here in this chair. We don't, do you see any 13 to 18 year olds or a hardcore employee in this room? So we have to get the message, and that's our duty. So what I'm looking to do with, uh, with the public safety, and I believe public safety starts with our future, our youth, and how we see ourselves and the things that we're at risk. So we're looking to have a town hall meeting at 292 to discuss the issues that are affecting this community. We all can say a lot of good things are happening, but we want to make sure it happens to us. Am I, everybody with me? Make sure it happens to us, that we don't, and not happen to us, that we're out, that we're in. So again, we're going to, I'm going to share that with the, uh, the community board. We're going to blast out for the public safety. We're going to have uh, a town hall meeting where we'll be in conjunction with CBOs like Man Up, and the, uh, we talk to the principal there, and they need us. Our youth need us, as well as our seniors. Please, please, when you see it, come out, because it's going to be resourced, but we must speak in our own narrative what we need to stay in our communities. These are our homes. This is our neighborhood. If you don't do something, somebody else will do what they want to do. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Um, Neil Booker. Good evening. Good evening, community board. Uh, my issue is a little bit different. Um, I'm a resident of Williams Avenue between Newport and Riverdale, and we've been experiencing a lack of quality of life, uh, particularly in relation to like cleanliness, sanitation, quite a few other things. Um, for some reason, uh, we've had abandoned buildings or seemingly abandoned buildings that have been unkempt for months, uh, squatters, uh, trash, dog stuff, and sanitation for some reason does not come around there, does not issue tickets. And I've been partnering with Brother Kenny as of last night. And hopefully we can get some things resolved. But community board, I'm coming to you to see if we can get some things resolved. Because it's not just my block. As I walk the community, I see a lot of the same issues. Uh, abandoned cars who, for whatever reason, they're not being removed. And they are not cleaning when it comes to alternate side of the park, alternate side of the street parking either. So just need your guys' help. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Imara Gwanga. Imara Gwanga. Ranger. Ranger. Hi, good evening, everyone. So, my name is Imara Granger. I am a fitness professional, a counselor, and a mom of two in the East New York area. I come to you tonight to spe specifically present to you uh, my class that I offer every Tuesday at Arts East New York. Um, it's from 7 to 8 p.m. It's an aerobics class. It's a combination of African dance and aerobics. I mean, I'm sorry, an Afri it's a combination of African dance and aerobics. Um, I'm also gonna leave some business cards in the back. I work a lot with youth, women, individuals in recovery, so feel free to contact me if you would like me to come and do something with your program and come check out my class. My social media information is also on the flyer so you can have a look at what the class is about and see um, a little bit more about me. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Tammy, Tammy Green.
Uh, good evening, Community Board 5 guys. How you doing? You guys are looking really good, so give yourselves a round of applause. 2018, I'm glad that I made it. I never know when this meeting is being held, so I'm so glad that it's being held today, and I'm so glad that it's being held live. That's a fantastic uh, opportunity for those who cannot come. But I'm here representing three organizations. I, too, am, uh, where's the sister that just stood, oh, for the fitness classes? There she go back there. I'm Pro Fitness 101, the ultimate in urban fitness training. We do athletic directing. We also doing a special networking. We are concerned with the issues of the health. Your health is your wealth. And the unity has to be in the community. And if we don't take care of ourselves, we cannot take care of others. And so therefore, we're looking for individuals who have health concerns, whether that be diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease. We want to connect with you with what your concerns are so we can provide an overall wellness program that's tied in with fitness with a spiritual realm. The second thing that we're doing, we know that New York City is big on giving away what in the wintertime? What does New York City give away? Coats. But now what we're doing, uh, Pro Fitness 101 is teaming up with Cornerstone Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're doing a boot drive. It's called These Boots Are Made For Warming. And we know firsthand that you can have a hat, glove, scarf, and a coat. But if your feet are not protected, what happens? You can't even walk two blocks. And so therefore, we're doing a boot drive which is being held from January 14th to February the 18th. And the third thing that we're concerned about is our seniors in the community. We know that the economic development is here. We know that the taxes have risen and that they will be driven out of their home. They do have senior housing developments coming up, but it's by a lottery. So a lot of our seniors are going to be displaced. I don't have any literature with me because I'm so happy I made it. I didn't know I was going to find it. But you can meet me after the meeting. My email is profitness one on one at yahoo.com. And my direct line is 646 359 0042. I'll repeat again 646 359 0042. Invest in your wealth because your health is your, invest in your wealth because your health is your, and if you don't invest in, is that Brother Norman? How you doing? Another health, come on, stand on up. We got three health professionals here, and my brothers and sisters and Latino, no matter where you're from, you must get your physical checkup, you must know your numbers, you must eat right, live right, and get fit. Talk to you later, thank you so much. Dolly, Dolly Agwaba, Agwabo. Good evening. I'm actually not Dolly Agwabo, but she's coming. But my name is Cynthia Blake, and I'm from, we're from Catholic Guardian Services. And we're a foster care agency, and we've been reaching out to community boards. Um, with we've been reaching out to Bed Stuy, Brownsville, and East New York community boards, because those are the three communities where we've seen um, the highest placement of children in foster care. Catholic Guardian Services is a foster care and adoption agency. We're contracted by ACS, and we wanted to appeal to the community because. The primary areas where children feel the most stability is in home and at school, and we need more foster parents to be, we need foster parents for our children so that they can remain in the communities where they live. Oftentimes, children, when they're placed, if we don't have enough foster parents in the communities where they came from, they have to be displaced to other communities, and that makes it, it's already traumatic for children to be moved from their families, so we are trying to keep children in the community. So we're really looking to the, those communities, again, in Bedside, Brownsville, and East New York, to come and become foster parents with us. Um, we're here, we have um, literature, so you can learn about what it takes to become a foster parent. There is financial assistance 
for the individuals that are interested and there are some stringent requirements but we are really asking that you talk to us if you're interested or if you have individuals in your family or in your church or somewhere else any other community associations that you're involved in that might be interested to please contact us and ask us to come and speak at your churches or different places because we really really have a shortage of foster parents and we need more people to you know take care of our vulnerable children so I don't know if Dolly has anything else to say but that's pretty much why we're here tonight so we'll be sitting over there in the back and if you can just come see us if you're interested after the the meeting we'd be happy to speak with you thank you thank you sister Charles Bullock good evening I would like to thank all the community and the public officials for attending this meeting today my name is Charles Bullock I'm a part of the I'm the recording secretary for the youth committee and I'm also a union carpenter shop steward I've been a part of the union for about 13 years um you can look up on the website NYC district council dot com for information for apprenticeship and apprenticeship applications for carpenters um my, my main thing is that building in our community needs to be somewhat union so we can provide health benefits 401ks pensions to people that actually live in the community because right now we we have a lot of projects that's going on that look beautiful but these people are not getting prevailing wages and they're not getting benefits so what I say personally is that we incorporate unions some, somewhat into these projects so we can give someone an opportunity to have a life where they can afford to live actually where they're at. All right. And um, every second Wednesday of the month for 2018, we'll be giving out applications at 395 Hudson Street, and that's in Manhattan. All you need is a government issued ID in order to um, get, um, receive an application all you need to have is a high school GED and be 17 years of age right now there's a project going on up the block from my house called the Ebenezer project is about 500 units going up right up the block from me I'm a shop steward been in the Union 13 years I can't walk up the block to that job let's make an opportunity so I could get on and I could open up opportunity for at least one person to receive 401k a pension and actually so they can actually feed their family all right the, the second thing I want to talk about is our youth town hall on um, this Saturday January 27th at Penn Worthman 895 Pennsylvania Avenue between Stanley and Worthman we're having a youth town hall the explorers the police the community you're all welcome to come educators community leaders this is for the kids we want to hear what they want in the community what they need in the community we want to meet their needs we, we have a strong um, committee some Sadiq is here Sharon Brown we, we have a youth committee and we've been working hard and we, we want to make a difference we don't want to just sit back and listen to what everybody has to say and nothing happens we actually want to make action in the community so I just need everybody to tune in Saturday January 27th to the youth town hall and also www.nycdistrictcouncil.com for apprenticeship information and training center applications. At the next meeting, I will have flyers for the union so people can actually see visually. The, last, the, um, the meeting before last, I had flyers, but this meeting I didn't. But I'll make sure I have flyers for the next meeting. But make sure you tune into www.nycdistrictcouncil.com to see the information and see what the program is about. And you only got to be 17 years old to get into the union. So, you know, I stood on the back of a line and I got my application in. So don't be discouraged by a long line around the block. Make sure that that kid gets there and gets the application in. Get there an hour before. There's kids out there in tents. So 
there, there's a way that you could get in and there's opportunities out there. So I just need everybody to tune in. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Charles. Ricky Thompson. Good evening, family. Um, this is a concern um, issue for my, for the residents. I live in East New York. I live in Meadowood. Um, and I was very, very discouraged um, during the snowstorm, after the, sto after the snowstorm. I was driving down Flatlands, and on Flatlands between Van Sicklin and Skate, the DEP owns the whole street. The snow was never shoveled. I sent 311s. I actually seen a lady fall. It was the reason why I started. I said, let me call 311 to have this issue rectified. I called, and I'm, I'm, a, ex, um, I'm a retired supervisor. So when you close out a 311 and you didn't do your job, you're telling me a lie. I would got help from the community board, but they never did their job. And the sad part about it, on the billboard it says, Bill de Blasio. <laughs> and this is two days after he's on the news shoveling snow in front of his house. So my, my issue is the DEP needs to take care of that street, the whole street. There's no reason why you call the sanitation department, I mean 311, and they're going to tell you a lie. You can't lie to somebody who's been on the job for 23 years. So that's the issue I definitely need addressed. The DEP needs to have that block shoveled. There's no reason why that whole block should not be shoveled. Thank you. So, so prior to you, um, I know that you spoke to our district office, and I'm, I know that we're on it because we, we meet with them monthly, and so I'm sure the concern will be um, conveyed even more so. But have Brother Kenny um, Watson, is our chair of sanitation and environmental issues just speak and that way we stay in touch and we want to just make sure that in fact hopefully it doesn't snow like that again um <laughs> for, the, for the for the rest of the winter but if it does we want to be on board and we want to say that we've done something unprecedented here at our board brother you need to know we meet uh we have a conference call with them all prior to major snowstorms and any sort of weather related issue um we meet without i have a conference call with our district uh, sort of chiefs and so we will be on top of that even more so okay going forward thank you um, Joanna Joanna Bennett good evening everyone and thank you for having me my name is Joanna Bennett, and I'm here to talk about the Long Life Community Fire Collective. And this is a food co-op. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm here to talk about a food co-op where everybody, I'm so glad to hear that so many of the speakers, uh oh, what have I done? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to hear that so many of the previous speakers have talked about the issue of health. And, and the other thing that we want to do is improve our health, but we also want to be able to stretch our dollars. The Long Life Unity Buyers Food Collective, there you can buy three times as many foods, fresh fruits and vegetables as you would if you were going to a supermarket. Very easy. It's a $25 annual membership, and you call and phone in your orders every two weeks. We obtain our fresh produce from the same place as the supermarkets, Hunts Point. Beautiful produce you get. People are amazed at the quantity of fruits and vegetables that they get. Many of you may remember a gentleman by the name of G2 Weusi. Every year he we go down to the African Heritage Festival, African downtown. He started that at 10 Claver Place. He started the East, and he started this uh, food co-op 20 years ago. So I'm letting you know that it is still in existence. Please tell your friends, share with your family. You will be so satisfied with what your, how far your dollars are going to go and, and, and being able to eat healthy too and keeping our dollars in the community. So thank you very much. Kareem Nemley, Kareem Nemley. Good 
evening, guys. Happy New Year. Um, hello, my name is Kareem Nemley, and I'm the founder and artistic director of Rooted Theater Company here in East New York. Um, I'm letting you know that we have open auditions coming up next Saturday, February 3rd, at the New Locks Library. Um, we just ask that you bring a monologue and uh, a smile, and you can potentially be a part of our cast. Um, we'd like to thank the community for, uh, last year for our first... Am I close? I'd like to thank the community last year um, for their participation, for you guys' participation in our first show. It was a great success. Um, a Lesson Before Dying, um, uh, we heard nothing but great remarks and a good community um, outreach within that. So with this production, we got the green light to do um, Four Color Girls. Everyone knows that play, right? So if you know of any women, um, especially during this time, the Me Too movement and everything else is going on, you want to know what the uh, colored woman, I'm just talking about the show, um, thinks about what's going on. So please participate. Again, it's next week, Saturday, the New Locks Library. The auditions are from 11 to 2. Um, this is a non-union paid booking, so you would get paid if you get the part. And um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Flyers are in the back along with uh, uh, business cards. Jessica Franco. Good evening, everyone. It's still nerve-wracking to stand here in front of you and speak. <laughs> um, so my name is Jessica Franco. I'm chair of education at Community Board 5. And um, I just want to bring you a quick reminder that um, this year for 2016 and 2017, um, we have a reading proficiency in District 19 of 25%, meaning 75% of our students are not proficient in reading. For math, we have a reading proficiency of 20%, meaning 80% of our students are not proficient in math. As a parent of three, education is a huge concern to me, right? Um, as a parent, I'm, I'm here speaking to you as a mom, that you know we must continue to fight for education, for high quality academics, for arts, for music, for sports, right? Because that's where the future lies, right? And so we need to continue to push and push and push and push. We need to read. You know, just, just a quick, quick story. Um, my uh, freshman, my ninth grader, um, her uh, history teacher uh, was expecting. And for some reason, the principal didn't think of getting a replacement history teacher. So he just had a, uh, random super, um, a, a random substitute teacher uh, take the history class. And my daughter has to take the regents test. And so as we were having a quick dinner conversation, she brought this up. And I was able to call the school and be active on it. And so it takes that. It takes a five-second conversation to know what is going on with our children, how we can help, and how we can advocate, right? And it's, it, it, it doesn't take long, but let's also work together. Um, let's, let's work in unity. Uh, the Education Committee meets every first Thursday of the month. We will be meeting uh, the first Thursday of this month. So that is February the 1st on Thursday at 404 Pine Street. I expect to see all of you there. We will continue to uh, speak about education policy. Uh, we will continue to speak with the school authority construction to give us an update on the new school. And again, we're open to concerns and suggestions. Thank you very much and have, have a good evening. The time is at 6 p.m. Right. And children are always welcome. Right. Okay. What do you think, community? Right, but well, we're not done. We have some of the elected officials and their reps are present. We want you to also get to meet them. A lot of them have been listening also in on some of those issues and they are taking down their notes. Some of them can also assist the community board in resolving those issues. So we want to give them the opportunity if they would like to be acknowledged and or say something from their office. First and foremost is Maria Matos from Council Member Espinal's office. You care to say something or just be acknowledged, sister? So can you stand for so folks to see how that's from? She's from Council Member 
Espinal's office. So. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Well, our council member already said it all, but I wanted to say for the people who they don't know where our office is yet, we're going to move, but for the time being, it's 786 Knickerbocker in the corner of Halsey Street. Our phone number is 718-642-8664. We have an immigration attorney from CUNY, from Citizenship Now, who comes every Monday, 10 to 4. So you can call us and make an appointment for that citizenship application or residence or for the ACA DACA. We, you know, we all you know, uh, the communities need that information. On Wednesdays, we have a housing attorney who comes from Brooklyn Legal Services uh, from 10 till 12, 10 to 11.30. So you can call our office and make the appointment. And last, we have um, an event with the Brooklyn Borough President, Eric Adams, is on Tuesday, February 27th at 5.30 at Brooklyn Borough Hall. It's a Dominican Independence Day, Independence Day event. We're doing this in partnership with the um, Brooklyn Borough Hall president, so please come and join us. And also, uh, please stay tuned. We have a job fair on Saturday, February 24th. Um, I'm going to send you the emails, and for the next meeting, I'll give you the flyers. It's very important because we're going to have a motivational speaker, and not only people are going to have the chance to give their resumes to um, all the employers, but a chance to know step by step in a PowerPoint presentation, how can you make your resume, which is very important for those folks who you know, still are learning. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. From Senator Roxanne Prasad's office, Brother Latif Terrell. Good evening and Happy New Year. My name is Latif Terrell. I am a uh, constituent liaison for Senator Prasad, which means I'm your constituent liaison. Uh, any of these issues that you know that you have addressed, the Community Board Five, first off, big round of applause because they do a wonderful job. One of the most active boards uh, that I that I go to. So you know it's, it's tremendous the way they spread information, streaming it live. I mean, all of this is part of things to get the community engaged, and they do a great job of doing that. Um, a couple quick updates. Uh, legislative season started uh, on the 3rd of January. Um, this uh, Democratic conference as a whole has focused on a number of pieces of legislation that address sexual harassment. Obviously, we all know why, because it's been a big thing in the media. Um, another thing that Senator Fassard is also working on is uh, a piece of legislation that she sponsored that in the event that the federal government pulls family planning services, that the state will be able to appropriate $35 million to go to, to help towards, you know, all the uh, insurance, um, family services, just anything that is related to family services. Um, in our office coming up, well, tomorrow we have New York Legal Services. Those appointments are already scheduled up, but we'll also be hosting that on March 16th and Friday, April 27th. From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., call the district office. We'd love to make you an appointment. They handle uh, any civil services relating to you know, housing, public benefits, disability benefits, identity theft, and, and a number of other services. Uh, the contact number for the district office is 718-649-7653. And once again, you can call with, with any concern. If we can't address it, we'll get you to someone who can address it. Thank you. Thank you. From Councilwoman Inez Barron's office, we have Anita Fisher. Greetings all from Councilmember Inez Barron. Uh, I'd like to let you know that our office is located at 718 Pennsylvania Avenue. We're at the corner of Hegman. Uh, we have services where uh, we have an attorney that takes care of any house, um, housing issues with landlord and tenant. Uh, we also have, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the HEAP program. Okay, so HEAP has a grant that would assist homeowners as well as residents in paying your gas bill or 
utility. Now, um, it's a $200 grant that you don't have to pay back. It's given to you. You also have um, to your access emergency heap, which is another 200. And our office is part of the heart share. So um, I'm the representative for Council Member Barron with heart share, anyone that needs assistance in taking care of a national grid bill. Uh, heart share also gives $200. Now, the only way you can be eligible for the heart share is if you utilize the HEAP and the emergency HEAP first, once your name is on the list and um, for having received those grants, then you're eligible for uh, the heart share. So altogether, that's, that's $600 that would assist you as a tenant or even a landlord, a homeowner that's having concerns or having struggles with uh, taking care of that bill. Okay, so if with the housing attorney, we have that as housing attorney every other Tuesday. We had him this week, so we're not due to have him again until the 6th. That's every Tuesday evening for the working folks that can't, you know, take out to, to take care of those issues. Uh, the attorney's in our office from 5 to 7. Okay, and you can call and make an appointment. I'll be more than happy to address that. You can call 718. 649-9495. Have a good evening, all. Uh, we have Brother Darrell White here, who is from the Public Advocates Leticia Williams, uh, James office. community at large. Again, my name is Daryl White, and I'm here from the New York City Public Advocates Office, Tis James. And on behalf of Tis James, she wanted me to say Happy New Year. Um, I brought what we call our palm card, and it has our information. Um, if anyone's here from NYCHA, um, and you're still having a problem with heat and hot water, please give us a call. Uh, our number is on this palm card. My the palm, palm card is in the back. Uh, please take one. All our information is there. Uh, we're still uh, wrestling with bad landlords. Um, the public advocate has a bad landlord list. She has actually the 100 worst landlords uh, in the city, and we've broken them down by borough. So please go to our website. And if you see your building on there, give us a call. Um, we're trying to stop these bad landlords. And you already know what they're trying to do. They're trying to move you out, take you out of your rent regulated apartment, and obviously um, gouge anyone else who may be trying to find a suitable apartment. So please give us a call. That's really very important. Um, pushes indigenous people out of their own neighborhoods. And that's not a really good thing to do. So we're here to try to help and help the best we can. Uh, and I'll try to make as many meetings as I can, Mr. Chair. And that's all for me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least is Brother Frank. My brother B, my brother from the uh, district attorney's Eric Gonzalez office. I say brother B because I haven't got it down packed yet. He knows why. Good to see you. Happy New Year's. Hi, how's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is uh, Frangel Bastora. I work at the Kings County District Attorney's Office. Um, and from the office, I represent East New York. Um, greetings on behalf of District Attorney Eric Gonzalez. Happy New Year to you all. Um, I. Firstly, just want to mention the initiative that our office is starting. It's called uh, Justice uh, 2020. And what's happening um, this year that uh, Mr. Gonzalez is initiating along with the rest of the office is that he's collecting uh, community leaders and leaders in the law field <clears throat> and bringing them together uh, to just to propose reforms for our community uh, and to just uh, lead to make sure that our office leads as uh, one of the most progressive 
prosecutor's offices in America. It's something that he's very passionate about doing. He's very passionate about making sure that we're just not throwing people in jail, that we're cutting on the and addressing the racial disparity um, in our criminal justice system and making sure that uh, underdeserved communities um, and the rest of Brooklyn are very much taken care of and represented. Um, I want to give you my email address and phone number. I'm the person you contact if you have any questions um, or any help regarding our office. <clears throat> and I'll be around to make sure that you guys know of our resources and our events. If you guys have any events, um, if you think that it's a good idea for the DA's office or any of our other representatives to be a part of it, please let me know. Uh, my phone number is 718-250-2138. Again, that's 718-250-2138. And my email address is my last name, Basora, uh, B as in boy, A-S-O-R-A, -A, first initial F, at brooklynda.org. Uh, I'll be around. If you have any questions, please let me know. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, phone number is 718-250-2138. Three eight. Three eight, yeah. And email address, basorahf at brooklynda.org. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So community, can we clap it up for all the community voices that we've heard tonight? Very, very good job. Thank you for every one of you who have lent to this conversation tonight. Those of you who got up and spoke and expressed and shared all of that information, we can really appreciate um, all of the volume of things that you lend to tonight's meeting. I hope community is, is, is appreciative. There's a lot thing, of things going on. There's a lot of things happening. There's, a, there's applications that's out there. There's, there's opportunities out there. There's programs out there. And we want the community to be made, made aware of it so that we can take advantage of it. In East New York, we, we are kind of like moving in the direction of making sure that we get in front of all of these things and making sure that our name is in the hat. So hopefully you've taken down some of this information. And if it doesn't apply to you personally, um, share it with a neighbor. Take it back to a young person that you may know of on your block that you want to say something to and approach them. And the person in you know, your building and a homeowner that's next door to you, if your heat problems are, you have it at, a, a, at where you can feel you have it under control, maybe share the, the heat program and some of the other information that you hear that was given out tonight. Is that fair? All right, that's the purpose of our community's voices. If you notice, now that the board memberships uh, bodies have come out, we've also did it for twofold reasons, because we wanted to make sure that the board members uh, make their way so that they can get here, so that they can be here and feel presence. If the board members are present now, can you please just raise your hand so that the community can recognize you? Because we are now quorum. We are at a quorum. And that is a great sign. All of the people whose hands that were raised are members who have been appointed to serve you, to help you help yourself. So you don't have to just track down the chair or any of the other executive board members or just the district office. These men and women are also have sworn and took an oath that said that they will also help you as well. They represent the entire district of CB5. We believe in team here, okay? And then it's you. It's you too, you got a job to do as well. And you should not just wait for someone else to do things for you, some of these things you can do for yourself. And you should also be active on your block and inside your church or in your community as well. And so with that, we now wanna go into the official part of business. We do that so we can get a quorum, because without quorum, we can't move things that are needed for a vote. We can't move it forward. But we can do everything outside of vote and with that, we ask that you now, community, now it's your time to listen to how community board business is conducted. Is that fair? All right, and if you bear with us, you will learn something and you will see how these meetings are ran and maybe one day you'll make yourself onto the board and you could become a member of the community board. But during this time frame, it's normally not, we ask that community cannot necessarily have a role unless the chair, chooses to do so, that's in the charter. So with that said, I've seen the brother had his hand up. I'm gonna give you a chance to speak. You have a question? Yes. Please. Good evening. Uh, we are here to 
we all know that the resources in our community are maldistributed. Uh, I know that William I at the Xander School. If I can ask, I'm sorry, if you want to come to be on the mic so that we can hear you on the live stream, I appreciate it. So going forward, community, anytime that you want to speak, there's a sign-in sheet that's right there located at the desk going forward, okay? You go right there, brother. All right, and sign in during that time so that we make sure that you're on the list, okay? We want to give everybody their, ch their chance to speak at, young brother. Hi, good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. My name is Ike Keji. I work uh, inside this school. As I was saying, we understand that the, the resources in East New York has been maldistributed. I know in Park Slope, their middle school, William Alexander, has Apple computers, uh, desktops that are up to date. How do we fix that in our middle schools in East New York? Because we have very, very poor laptops and computers. How are they supposed to get a shot? Good question. That young brother right there has the answer. Do you hear him? <laughs> no. So honestly, but as you, you're, you're a young man, you have the voice. We, we all have voices, all right? So we have to lift our voice, and we have to kind of collectify. We have to bring our voices together, and we have to all ask for these same things, um, these things at the same time to the right people, okay? So there's resources like you're asking for certain equipment that, that is needed for communities, uh, neighborhoods like this with certain, uh, I think, technology, if that's what I'm listening to you correctly. Yeah, William Alexander and Park Slope. Got it. Coding class. Yes, all of that. We cannot do that without no, you. No, 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 I don't like to say we can't. I, I don't want us to think that we can't do anything. We can do, we, we put our heads together, we can do anything we want to do. Like those resources that you speak of, yep. that's, that's STEM resources that we can welcome. We actually have a member on our board that does a stemming pro, a coding program for girls. There are a number of other organizations. We just have to get in touch with each other and we have to welcome them out. Now, when, you, when we do, I see the hands going up and I, and I just wanna answer the brother and I'll give you a chance to add. So when we do, 90% uh, of the time is gonna come with a cost, okay? And I want people to understand that these programs, are, 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 they, they come with a cost. And so if they're not funded already, we have to go to where the funding streams are. And we have to ask the offices that are here, you have the elected officials' offices that are present, the council member's office, the state assembly's office, the borough president's office, the, the, the public, all of the elected officials that you've seen come up here and, and speak. That's a good question you can bring to them, and they can bring it back, and maybe they can include that in their budgets. And maybe they can look and choose an organization out in this area that can provide that type of resource so that we can have the same things that they do in Fort Greene and other parts of the borough. There was other members that wanted to share, and I wanted to, I, I don't want to turn it into that. I'm not, I'm, not saying you, I'm not saying you board member Brown. I'm only going to give board member Peen and board member Brown the opportunity to share. Okay? And we're going to move on. You're cheating. You're cheating. No, we're running tight. I'll give it to you, DM. But let me let. Okay, I'll give it to you. You know, we're lacking in some things, but we we uh, applied for uh, money from Com uh, Councilwoman Inez Barron, and we received it in that you know same year. We were blessed with. Uh, I won't say how much money you tell us. <laughs> I'm just saying, she, she gave us and we received it, and um, we'll be able to buy those laptops and desktops. Okay, hold on, thank you. Uh, hold on. All right, oh, thank you, thank you, sister. Uh, all right, go ahead, district manager. Is there anything different you can add? Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Last but not least, because I want to be fair, board member Feliciano. Um, I used to run a, uh, uh, the district in the Bronx, District 12. And what happens in effect, the funding comes into the schools. Each school is, is based on the number of uh, students we have, the number of teachers, and we have to determine how that's going to be split. So it's actually a function also of the district itself, how the money is distributed. So if we put emphasis on the district itself, they would provide allocations because there's certain, the money itself comes as a, as, a, as a, we have to budget the money at the district. So, so what happens is if we put enough emphasis, they will provide funding for the computers and, and all the other things, okay? I can't, I can't. Now I'm gonna be honest, none of y'all said nothing different than what I said. <laughs> but it's, I'm not, we can't right now, board member Franco. I, I, young man, thank you so much for asking that question. I hope that you heard the answer. If I would like to speak, you can also speak to them after the meeting is over on our exit, okay? But just in the future community, that's why we give you the front part of the meeting, you sign in and we get you so that you can get heard, all right? So, board members, we still have quorum. I don't want board members to leave because then we can't vote. And I, and I wanna get past this part of the meeting. So, you all should have in your folders the agenda for today. May I see it? And like I said, we have quorum. I've already opened the meeting. I will entertain a motion to approve the January agenda that you have made by board member uh, Sadiq, second by board member Brayboy. All those members in favor say aye. aye. Any objections? The ayes have it, so the agenda has been approved. So again, if you have uh, should have received a copy of the December minutes by now, board members, I will approve. I will accept the motion to approve the December mi minutes. Okay, brother um, Abdul. Again, is it second by any board members? Board member Loman. All members in favor say aye. aye. Any objections? Okay, so our minutes are approved. Committee reports. I need board uh, committees that just have items that need to be voted on to give report tonight because we have board members that have to leave for emergencies and I don't want the quorum to be broken. So I do know that there is an item in quality of life that we met on last night that need a vote and so co-chair Jessica Bailey. Good evening, everybody. So I'm gonna just ask that you bear with me. The Quality of Life um, Committee, our meeting was last night. And um, the purpose of the Quality of Life Committee, um, we were newly formed by the board chair um, this year. And our purpose is to review SLA and TLC applications that come in for renewal and for new um, service. So SLA is anybody that has lick that wants to serve liquor or wine or beer out of their establishments and TLCs is the taxi cabs and limousine organizations. Um, we had our first vote last night for um, two restaurants who would like to renew their SLA applications and it was the El Rey restaurant which is at 1064 Liberty and Toribio restaurant which is a new license for liquor, beer, and wine, and that's at 3169 Fulton. Um, we w reviewed their documents. They are required to send in the same documents that they sent into SLA, as well as fill out a community board questionnaire. Um, pending um, the, a no objection document from the 75th precinct, which will state whether the organization has any violations, um, Department of Health violations, um, any I guess noise disturbances, anything of that nature. Pending that, um, the committee has agreed to renew both the licenses for both 
applications pending the board's um, recommendation, we will send that recommendation to SLA to approve that application for renewal. So we would like to bring that for a vote tonight. Right. You voted last night, right? Yes, the board, the committee, quality of life committee met last night and we voted to recommend renewal for the El Rey restaurant located at 1064 Liberty and the Toribio restaurant for a new license, a new SLA license located at 3169 Fulton Street. Okay, thank you. So the chair, uh, the committee has met, they made a recommendation to approve two um, restaurants in the area. And with that, you know, I will accept the motion from someone of the board members by Manny Burgos and, and second by my brother Alberto Ramos. And with that, I would open as any board members that would like to speak to these two renewals. If not, we can move forward. Okay, so without that, we're we gonna take a vote. So all those board members in favor of the committee's recommendation to support these renewal applications, say aye. aye. Any board members object? All right, so the ayes have it and the motion is carried. Thank you. Finally, the Quality of Life Committee meets the first Tuesday of every month at 404 Pine Street at 6 p.m. If you are interested in coming to assist us in reviewing these applications, if you're a community member that would like to um, let us know of any other organizations that's within your area that you have any quality of life concerns about, please feel free to come out. Thank you. Thank you. So there's another vote that I believe that we had long to take advantage of when we have quorum, and that is, if you're looking at old businesses, the Grand Avenue Municipal Parking Facility vote. And that is a issue that was first reviewed by public safety, and then it was second reviewed by myself um, because there was an issue with this municipal parking lot that had to be resolved. Um, and those of you that may know about it, it's the MTA parking lot on Grant Avenue, and I believe Pickin, and it was always, a, they have an annual program there that oftentimes um, brings out a lot of people, um, and it was brought to our attention by community members. Um, they, they, they had filed some complaints, they wanted some assistance, and so we was able to intervene. And what we did was they had a long process. We had several hearings where we sat down with all the parties involved, and we listened to each individual party and their um, position. We asked these parties to come up with a collective sort of compromise so that you know, there was some, asked for some consensus. Um, unfortunately, we could not reach a consensus amongst these parties and it was stated at that time that we the board would have to render a decision because they could not reach a consensus and the department of transportation at, that issues out a permit, the New York, City, New York Police Department that issues out a sound permit agreed that they will support the board's decision as it relates to how there should be activities on this municipal parking lot. Just for the record, in CB5 we have just one. If I can ask for folks that are talking, please, at the tables, please, if you could just bring it down, make it a little lower. So this is, we in CB5 have just one municipal parking lot in our district of its kind, okay? This one is unique because it is, uh, um, 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 it's during the week, it's a, it's a regular parking lot for people that use the transportation, the subway there. But during certain times of the year, during uh, the summer, the organizations use it for various different functions. And now we've discovered that other organizations and other people are beginning to want to apply to use the same parking lot, which the community, surrounding members of the community that has come before this board, has come before the committee, have voiced that it's gotten a, a lot out of control and it has become um, a violation of their quality of life. So with that, we come in, came up with a, with, a, with a compromise. We submitted that compromise to you board members um, we just haven't had quorum, and now I'm asking that we move to vote on this, being that we have quorum. So, um, we, do we have a copy of? Right.
particulars of the Right, do you need some of it? If you can, I'm, I'm sorry. I know that we just be limited. Because there was a matter, it was about certain days of the week and that maximum and minimum amount of time. It had a lot to do with start and finish time. It was, these were the areas where they could not compromise. And so what we decided, uh, all fairness, so that everybody and that the activities that was taking place there, which was benefiting the community as well, we wanted to make sure that we didn't want to discourage the activity, but we wanted the activity organizers to respect the surrounding community and some of the people that live in the area and that it would not be a, a, a further nuisance to them. And so we set a time limit So, because this, the, the, the uh, NYPD issues out the sound permit, and they do give extensions, but it's based on the fact that, you know, it doesn't disrupt anybody else, and the DOT issued out sound, uh, uh, space permits. And that's really what, again, they could not come to the, any consensus. So that's the limit that we set. We think it's fair. Some of them wanted an extra hour, some of them wanted an extra half an hour. I'm gonna get to you in a second, because when we get a chance. So I, uh, we put the motion out, I will entertain a board member who's willing to support the motion that's on the floor. No, I need one to say you. So we have board member Loman that is in favor of the committee's recommendation for the time limits that we set. Is there a board member that would like to second? It's second by Ms. Helen. Now we'll open up for board members that would like to make comment. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of uh, Queen Brand. Thank you for uh, our Chairperson Mitchell. And thank you for all the board members that our community board have been active. Uh, it wasn't active as 10 years ago, and that's why the uh, 2009, this event started event, because uh, if you're not aware of it, one of the fellow in the neighborhood been shot and killed, because people come from the subway, and this parking lot is very deserted, and a lot of mugging happened in this area. That's why I begged this, one of the nonprofit uh, uh, organization took the initiative to do a multicultural festival for five days. And reason for five days, because we, this is a very diversity community, different culture. We do Latino night, Caribbean night, American night, Asian night, and Bangladeshi night. So everybody can come and enjoy. And became so, it became a landmark. It's, and, and it's true, it's not 100 people, it's thousands and thousands of people come every year. And we've been doing it up to midnight, no complaint. Suddenly, only two person came in last year and complained. And one of, and I'm not gonna go through, and we had a lot of discussion with the community board meeting and elected official with the, uh, with the president, and we were able to do it last, ten, uh, last year, 10 o'clock. And the whole community was coming, what's going on is, is community. And also, I spoke to 311 and said, if the community and surrounding area, 75% say yes, we are allowed to have this event. And I'm saying it is about 98% in the neighborhood, they suggested this event less up to 11 o'clock. But I don't know where they come from, 9.30, and making a prove it without. I would suggest the community to bring that to the safety community meeting and have me, and our vice president, uh, Mr. Uh, Feliciano was there, and he was enjoying all night, and he knows what happened. I would suggest, I would suggest bring that agenda on the table. I would love to bring those community member and the house owner, and I want to review that because well, because and I want to respect the community board because once you prove it, I don't want to disrupt and bring it over to the table again. Please. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, duly noted. And for uh, full transparency, he is uh, uh, head of the, the, the organization to host the event. Um, as heard, in the past, they've hosted this event, has gone all the way as to sometimes to midnight. 
some of the testimony that we've heard from community that are not here, they said it's actually gone, they've actually brought in video. They've actually showed us where it's gone beyond midnight. And so it's been times that, so we, that's his position, which is he was one of the persons that was in the room. We gave them again an opportunity to have a consensus or compromise, but community wasn't okay with even 10 o'clock and, um, you know, that's really unfortunate where they were going back and forth. They just could not reach a compromise. Any other board member? Okay. So what I would like to do, I would like to take this to the floor for the vote. And if you board members that are present are voting, you're voting in favor of what the consensus of the time that the community board has stated had to come up with because we listened to Every, this has been a long, drawn-out like, issue that we've been trying to resolve respectfully. And we've given everybody the ample amount of time to respond and to state their claim and their cause and bring evidence. And we had to render a decision because they could not reach one. And so what we decided is, as mentioned, is a, what we believe is a fair time on both sides so that it doesn't intrude on either all side. It doesn't stop the organization from having its festival um, that has been going on for some time. And it doesn't um, intrude that much on the community who lives in that surrounding area, okay? Because the community, they didn't even want it to be to 930, okay? They wanted it to end much sooner than that. And so what we decided is 930, is a safe, a fair enough time. As you heard mentioned, he wanted 10, but we rendered 9.30. And so I'm gonna ask board members for a vote so that we can move this process forward, okay? So if you want me to call a vote, and we do it like um, as a whole, or would you like me to call your name? And how do we? So all those members in favor of the well, the motion on the floor is to support the recommendations by the community board that I just stated, okay? That's the motion that's on the floor that has been seconded, okay? And that's what we're voting on. It's to end at 9.30, okay? We, we came up with a 9.30 time frame for the respect of the surrounding neighborhoods. That's our position and respect of the organization and the work that they do. Board member Bright. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. For block parties, yes, what is the stop time? Well, well, block parties have limits as well. I believe it's 8 p.m. And also for sound as well, it's 8 p.m. And that's the standard time for block parties. Okay? This particular event has been going well beyond 8 p.m. In the past, and we've asked, even last year, just give us some respectful compromise so that, but the community members still brought in evidence that it was still being disregarded. And so the agency said, unless we render a decision so that they can know how to move forward going forward, that's how they need to um, abide. So, Mr. Board Member, and I'm gonna move forward because we wanna be out of here in, this, in a little bit of time. Yes, Mr. Board Member. Yes. So what has happened as a result of such, of a success of what they've been doing, it has attracted other people now to want to do the same thing on the same parking lot. Okay. So when it used to be a once a year now for the, for the locals, it's four times a year or five. And they've also brought in evidence when there's been soccer games and so forth on the same, the taxis and it's been, it's been a mess. You know, it's no regulation. Okay, so in the past, there was no regulation. So they were allowed to do whatever they wanted to do. So what we have to do as a board, as we know this now, as we've been taking on new leadership out here, is we have to set regulations. Unfortunately, there wasn't any in the past. So we have to be those bearers of good news. I'm not saying bad news, but of good news, because people still live there. And people, you know, after the event is over, they talked about sanitation, cleanup issues. They talked about how they've been going to get ticketed. 
It's been a whole slew of other things that the community has voiced. And I just want it to be understand, it's been a very well thorough invest uh, hearing. We've been looking into it fairly. We've been hearing all sides. We brought the agencies in. We asked all of them, and we had to read those, those their, fine, their notes, and we came up with this. Last point, no, no. Uh, Mr. Chair, you mentioned that this uh, festival went beyond midnight. So my question to you, during your investigation, did it ever came to what, after what time they had permission to? Good question. So some of their permits they had was to 10, right? They said that they had extensions that went to 11. There's been video, there's video evidence of these things going on to sometimes one o'clock in, in the morning, okay? But if it, even if it affects one person, we have to understand that that's, that's the property owner, it's a resident, people have family, they got it's this way, but I don't want us to put numbers against each other. Nobody deserves to be, you know, their quality of life needs to be disrupted. So I'm just saying respectfully, it's a good, uh, thing that this organization has been doing, and out of success, sometimes a good thing can go bad. And we're not even talking about the volume of people that now turn out to this event. There's been said that this thing has exceeded 10,000 people. And it's now actually outgrown <laughs> the municipal parking lot. So, you know, I'm just asking, if, you know, that we put down some regulations and we move forward, and then we, you know, we see how that plans out, and that's what we should be doing as a board. So I'm just going to take a vote, and that way we can move this issue forward. Okay? So all those members in favor of supporting the recommendation by this community board, setting the regulations of the times that I stated, say aye. aye. Are there any members' objections to the motion? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, we have one abstention. We have three, two abstentions. Okay. So now we're going to have to do. We're going to have to. We're going to have to do a roll call, like vote, because I want to. I want to see how this is mathematically playing out. Please. That's right. You can't vote if you are the vice president. You don't. You can't vote. So because that's a correction. They they have to abstain. They have to abstain. So they have to remember that. And an abstention is a no. But you have to formally abstain. So if you have some personal sort of connection to this this particular issue or this organization or some kind of way, you're going to have to abstain because there is a conflict of interest. You need to keep this in mind, board members. Please. Last each point for member Franco. No, we still have form. It just we move it forward because we have form. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why we've been talking about it like this long because we have form. Okay. So do we have? Maybe she, 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 yes, please. Yes. So first to board member Burgos's point: Are there any members? who are present, who are affiliated with the organization Baptist, other than board member Ms. Rabdeen. Yes. It's both sides, not just, not just not Baptist, just but the community as well, and those persons that may, but there's no members on the board, that's, but it's all sides, not just all sides. Yes. One yes, it's still discussing. Uh, to the board member, I just want to- You have to address this to me, sir. Come okay. on, let me hear it. The chairperson. There's so much misinformation being given out to the board that the majority of the board not aware of it. I would love to be having one minute. I would like to clarify the situation what's okay. going on. Understood. Duly noted. But we got to move this forward. Okay? This, no, order. We got to move this forward. This has been too long. Okay? We got to resolve this as a board. And we have to take a position. We have to set precedents. Okay, because again, we are talking about a community in the neighborhood here, okay? So, uh, district manager? Yes. Hazel Worley? If you say yes, you're voting for the recommendation. If you say no, you, you're going against it. And if you're so she says yes. You're going up to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going in the order of the sign sheet. 
Okay. Seventeen, yes. Two, no. Five abstentions. The yes have it. Okay, so the yes have it. Thank you so much, board members. Okay, so we move. Yes, sir. What was the total vote? Twenty-four. Twenty-five. This is 24. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we had to go forward with this vote, and it is now resolved, at least in our eyes. We will be monitoring this going forward. We will let the agencies know that this is the board's position, and hopefully it will create a more peaceful, more harmonious sort of neighborhood and event if they choose to, 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 to go forward with it. Any other committee reports that require a vote? Okay, so there's no other committee reports. District manager's report. District manager Perkins, please, let me get your report. The other abstention was from uh, Ms. Love. That was the other number. Greetings, everyone. Um, just very quickly, I know we are leaving for this evening. Just to let you know, the district office, our temporary location, has now been extended for the remainder of 2018. Um, we will not be returning to the 127 Pennsylvania Avenue address until 2019. So the address where we are now, for those who don't know, is 404 Pine Street, and we're on the third floor. Um, we'll keep you updated on that progress. We'll be going into the building with another nonprofit organization that was selected through an RFP from the New York City Police Department, as well as with youth strategies, community affairs, and school safety. Uh, for board members who are, attend who are hosting the committee meetings at 404 Pine, be sure to tell your members who are coming 
to enter on the Euclid side. That's 475 Euclid Avenue, and we'll do the same from our glass. The 404 Pine side is closed in the evenings. Just a reminder. Um, the district office is hosting our second annuals, one for the block associations, where we gather all the block associations and bring SAPO and NYPD in to talk about the process for street activity permits. Um, if you are a block association president or part of a block association, please be sure to call our office. That meeting is taking place February 7th, and then we're holding our second annual meeting with private developments. We'll bring out city agencies for that as well. And legal from Brooklyn Legal Services. So we'll have legal representation to talk about tenants' rights and so forth. And that meeting is on January 31st. The January 31st meeting will be held at Linden Multiplex Theater on Linden Boulevard in Eldred Lane. And the Block Association meeting will be at the United Community Center, 613 New Lots Avenue. Um, trying to rush through. Just to let you know, uh, one of the things that came out of our district service cabinet is we always get complaints about loitering from neighboring shelters. We understand and we've stated for the record that Community Board 5 is not in favor of any new shelters coming into the district. However, the residents that are in shelters who are in our district are residents of the district. And one of the things we advocate for is to make sure that they have resources. Loitering and, and things that are happening that are, that are the result of the, com or result in complaints is because of the lack of resources. So we wanted to connect them to as many community-based organizations and other medical facilities to make sure that they're getting that help. Very recently, we held a meeting with all of the shelter directors in CB5 with Healthcare Choices, which is another organization that's now based in our district. We were able to connect them with resources. The directors were blown away by the free resources that they can now receive through this particular organization. So if you are a CBO and you have certain resources and activities and programs that are going on that you can extend those services to someone from shelters, whether that be families or individuals, please be sure to call our office. We'll set up that meeting. And it's another way for us to advocate for our local CBOs to get greater funding. So don't be ashamed to call, even if you don't have the resource, the, the amount of funding in your programs currently, this is something we can advocate for. And I'll leave it on that note. Okay, thank you. Uh, just for the, um, for the record, I want to, uh, there's a correction, it was 18 yeses, two noes, and five abstentions for that vote, okay? For a total of 25 members present. Yes, sir? Do you yes, sir. Quorum is 26. Rosalind McIntosh has actually um, resigned from the Yes, board. and we've... She, she announced yep. it, yes. That's right, we're at 48. So we're at 48 now. Yes, sir. Excellent. Okay. So, I want to give Malcolm, I want to give him a chance, the Bell President's rep is here. I just wanted to give him a chance to come and do a two-minute real quick because um, I can do that, and, and, and I know him. So come on um, forward, and, and let's make it happen, Malcolm, okay? Good to see you. Happy New Year. Good evening, everybody. Hi, my name is Mark Lee Daniel. I represent Brooklyn Borough President Erica Adams. I'll be real brief. Um, it's time to reapply for people who don't know. If you don't know, there's a sheet that's over there that I left that uh, the district manager has. Please, before you leave, if you don't know whether you need to reapply, please reapply. Also note that we do not interfere with how the community board governs who they want on and off the board. So basically, if you've been absent or if you caused any issues or whatever the case may be and you're no longer here, I am telling you up front, the borough president office does not intervene with that. That is how we govern. That's how you'll govern. Um, that's how we govern ourselves. Um, also, there's a lot of upcoming events. Borough Hall, I'm not going to really go through it. The main thing is that there's free tax preparation at Borough Hall. We have our Chinese New Year's event. We have our Black History. And we also have our plant based vegan meeting and also a property val uh, value event. There's flyers over there in the back and that's basically it. I'm just, um, I'm Anthony Drummond's backup and unfortunately he had a, he, he couldn't attend and I have a cold but I still came out to represent because that's what we do, right? We do. Thank you so much. All right. Have a nice okay, time. thank you. Board members, I've given you all a copy of, our, of my report. It's in your folder. I will not talk about all of the things besides that we still, um, as you see, we're quite shy. 
um, with board members. We have 48 members, um, and yet we still only had 25. So there's 10 or more, 15 or more board members who have yet to still be showing up. So we're gonna do, as he mentioned, and I appreciate him mentioning that, our due diligence. There's some members that we're just gonna have to vote off the board, straight up. There's too many people who are sitting in the audience that's community members on your committees that are coming to meetings and they have a right to be a, a, a person that can vote in this general body. And I think we should want to move, remove people who are not showing up for committees, not showing up for full general member me meetings, and they're just not, their names are just on the paper. You know, and that's not what community board appointments are about. It's not about just having your name on the paper. You gotta show up and you gotta be present and you have to sit into the meeting for the entirety of the meeting. We want you to listen to the public like all of we did. So maybe next month or so, if this continues, you're gonna hear a motion and I'm gonna hope that those board members that are here, that are with us, support the motion to remove certain members who have been chronic absentees off this board. And it's just not about from the, member, from the general member meeting, but from the committee meetings as well. And you can't have five and 10 apps, uh, uh, excuses. You know, you just, too many excuses, it's not an excuse anymore. You can't, you, for whatever reason, something else is in the way and you can't serve no more. Move away, allow for someone else new and young and possibly fresh to come and be on the board so that we can keep this board flowing in the direction that we've been going down, and I think we've been doing a superb job given all of those things. So that's what I'm talking about in my report. But more important, to, more important than that, I think we all have want to give our heartfelt condolences to you, Mother Vivian. I have it in my notes, in my report, but my deepest condolences to you, Mother, and to board member Bill Wilkins because they've lost their loved one and I just wanted to say that to you publicly, that on behalf of our board, we love you, we are here with you, and I wrote, we're here for you through any means necessary. That's a Malcolm quote, okay? Through any means, mother, you know we love you, right? All right, thank you for even coming out, and she's still here. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> membership. That's what we're talking about, membership. And she's losing, you know, she lost her loved one and she still shows up. So what excuse does anybody else have? Like, honestly, I love you for setting the example for us. Thank you, mother. So with that, old business we took care of. Any new business? Great, no new business. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. Made by Jerry Scott Brayboy, second by again, brother Abdul uh, Sadiq. All those members in favor say aye. aye. Any abstentions? No. Community, thank you so much, WNET. We appreciate you and your help. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out. And our next board meeting, we will let you know, go to our website so that you can see our next board meeting. Yes.